What is the prayer advance? For some of you, you hear that word and you don't, you don't know what that means. What is a prayer advance? Think prayer retreat. The reason why we don't use retreat, prayer retreat usually means you kind of go away somewhere for a, a, a day or a few days of prayer and you're retreating away from the battlefront, right? We've called this a prayer advance because we don't want to retreat from the battle. We're, we're in... in seeking God for more of his, his strength and his power, but advancing his cause. And so that's why we call it a prayer advance. The model for this came from Acts chapter 1, where you, have, you, you basically have the birth of the church, right? And in, in the book of Acts is all about the, uh, the, the, the life and times of, of the church, Okay, the church is born and here it comes. And one of the things that Jesus says to his, his disciples, his apostles, before they're ready to embark upon the call of God for all time, something that you and I embrace today, is he said, I want you to wait until, until God pours out his spirit and his power from on high. Okay, so what they did is they waited for 10 days in what's called, was called the upper room. And in this upper room, they didn't just sit around and, and cook hamburgers and play cards. You know what they did while they were waiting? They were waiting. What do you do when you wait? Well, let's catch the ball game. Well, let's do this, let's do that. Yeah. They were waiting, yes, but it wasn't a passive waiting. It was a very active waiting. What they did is they prayed. And so as they were praying over the course of those 10 days, and there was more than just the apostles. There were, there were uh, women, there were men, there were a lot more disciples there. And they were praying and they were waiting until the day which was the day of Pentecost, when God empowered his church with his spirit in a way that now they could go and bear witness to who Jesus Christ was and is for all generations. So he said, you're gonna go do this, but you can't do this in your own strength. How many of you know that? How many, yeah, yeah, I cannot do this Christian thing in my own strength. I will fail again and again and again. I need the strength and power of his spirit. Well, his spirit um, is, is energized in us when we pray. You just, you cannot read scripture and not see the relationship between prayer and and the presence and power of God's spirit. So that's what the prayer advance is all about. Now, in years past, we've done it so many different ways. And normally, it's you gather. You gather like this. We're in a place where, where we're in one another's presence. But due to the way things are today, we're going to do most of this virtually. And so, like like what you heard a little bit earlier in the announcements, is in that little handout that I gave you too, or we gave you, uh, tells you that each day, Monday, starting tomorrow morning through Saturday morning at 7 a.m., you can go to Grace City Facebook, and we'll come on live for about five to 10 minutes. We're gonna, we're gonna give direction, we're gonna give inspiration, and, and so then after that, You can disconnect and you can go somewhere and pray for however much time you have before you got to go to work or school or whatever else that you're doing. I greatly encourage you to take this time and do that. If if 7 o'clock doesn't work for you, you can come on later in the morning or or through the day because it'll be repeating. It will be there. You can go on and and see what what, uh, we had to say how we were encouraging, kind of giving focus for the day. So every day kind of has a little bit of a, of a theme. So ask you to do that. We also ask you to do this, whether you come on at seven or you come on later, would you 
just so we feel like we're all apart, we know that we're all connecting in this together, would you either leave a comment or do a like or something else like that just so we see that, hey, we're all connected in this thing together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, just, uh, just want to say, hey, let's go. Now, this morning... Um, I guess I'm kind of ready to get into the message, all right? So um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for everyone that's here. Lord, I thank you for your, what, you, what your heart is for us as a people. We are nothing without you. And so, Lord, we confess to you that we need you. Lord, our brothers and sisters that aren't here today, but they're following along with us online, Lord God, just connect heart to heart in the same way, Lord God, we pray that you speak to all of us in a, in a way, Lord God, that, that just gives us the, the hope, the inspiration, the faith, the strength, the might, Lord God, to live this life the way you've called us to. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I have one qualification before I get into this, and I I want you to hear this well, especially if you're watching online, okay? I'm going to speak a little bit about my experience getting coronavirus, okay? Okay? Uh, it's going to come into this message here in a moment. Um, here's my qualification. What I'm going to say about some of this is uh, I don't want anyone to take offense at. Okay? If you're watching online, I want you to understand this. Every one of us has to be responsible with this disease. Okay? That can be different for each one of us. It is all over the world. It is in in churches everywhere. And what I mean by that is that is that there may be reasons why there are. There are reasons why some of us are able to be here today and some of us are not able to be in this place today. I wish we were all able to be in here today, but I understand that just because um, you're not here in this physical place, but you're following online, hopefully, is that there, there may be reasons for the safety of you or a family member. Uh, or you may, ha- you may f- right now be a carrier. When I got coronavirus, the only responsible thing for me to do was to quarantine. I mean, that's just it. There was no question. Okay, Bo, you're going to quarantine now for the third time. <laughs> okay? And so, um, so I did that. My quarantine is several days past it. I'm well, and I'm back. And that's the right thing for me. I understand that... that uh, we're working through this. And so I just, I just want, as I speak to a few things, I don't want anybody to hear, hint, hint, what's he saying, okay? Because, um, because I, I think that, that we need to uh, understand the, uh, the need of every person to have to evaluate what's the right thing for them at each juncture as we move along. But I'm going to say some things that may sound like I'm questioning that, and I'm not questioning that major, massive point. Is that, is that clear? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. So, <laughs> I, I, I hadn't preached in a while. Uh, I'm just now getting my strength back. So, we'll see how this goes, all right? Uh, are y'all cool with that? Yeah. All right. In 2020, probably like most of us, I fought long and hard against a spirit 
of disconnectedness and disengagement. Did you? What do, I, what do I mean by that? You think about it. Every one of us thought that 2020, that's got 2020, vision. It's got to be a special year from God, right? Man, God's gonna do incredible things with his church. And it's like, bam, we're just gonna shut the church down, right? Remember all that? We were told to disengage. How many times have we heard that over the course of the last nine months? You know, uh, stay home, don't go out to eat, stay out of the gym, don't travel. Don't go to church. Now, remember my qualification, okay? So, what was the message that we heard again and again and again? Disengage. Disengage with life. Disengage with community disengage, where does that end? You know, when we start disengaging, you know what can happen? We can disengage in a whole lot more than maybe we thought we were disengaging from. We can disconnect from a whole lot more and not realize the devastating effects of that. I want to ask you the question, what are the things, and this is for us in here, and this is for us online, we're all one family, what are the things that you have, in, you have disengaged that God wants you to Reengage. Luke eighteen one. We're going to get into this in just a moment, but in Luke eighteen one, Jesus says <clears throat> to his followers, he says, "I want to tell you a parable so that at all times you might pray." and not lose heart. I'm gonna give you this parable, he says, that will help you understand why at all times, what times are we living in right now? At whatever time this is, it's a part of all times, isn't it? That you, that you would not cease to pray and that you would not lose heart. That word, lose heart, you know what it means? To lose heart means to either come to the place where you give up, or it means that you become so weary you don't wanna press on any further. You just wanna quit. You wanna disconnect, you wanna disengage. Now, <laughs> my story. I was, I got, a, I got a stack of yellow tablets that's that full. Every tablet has, I was working on messages going in, way into this winter. And it was all about it was all about spiritual eyesight. I was just like, <laughs> I was just, God, I want to see, I want to understand, I want to I see the unseen. I, I, I want the eyes of my heart to be clear, you know, and, uh, and I was just, I was working through scripture, and I got, I had laid out, y'all, some of you know my crazy ways, 
and I had long white tables and I had all my tablets out and man, this, this story from the Old Testament goes with these scriptures and, and I'm, I'm, I'm just working through all this stuff and I'm, I'm so excited. I'm working on a journal. Some of you say, oh no, not another journal. Well, I abandoned it, so don't worry about it. I just, I had to let it go. Um, I was just like, I'm ready for the prayer events. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for that. And all of a sudden, bam, I get coronavirus. Well, what did I decide to do? All right, I got a quarantine. God is just providing me a couple of weeks to just get alone with him, his word, my stuff, and I can just seek God while I'm quarantining, right? I was excited about it. Yay, I'm sick. I don't have to go to work. I don't have to work on all these other things. I can work on this. Well, the first few days was, here was my pattern of symptoms. My first few days is I was, <laughs> I was body aches and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's like, man, have you ever, you ever been hit with a nunchuck? I haven't. But I imagine what it would be like. You're just like, <clears throat> you know, at, somebody comes up and goes, <laughs> you're like, bam. You know, when you're done, it's like every bruise on every muscle. You know? And that's the way you feel after you've had, you know, something like that. <laughs> You get, you get a, a virus like that, you know. It's like when it's, when it's finally done, when it's beat you up for four or five days, you know, then you feel like every bruised, you know. But all of a sudden, so, so during those days, I would try to go over and I'd sit down, I'd try to work, and I'd just say, oh, man, I just, I'm in too much pain. So I just, I have maybe tomorrow. And then tomorrow would come, I'd try it again, and it's like, oh, another day. I got through that phase, and all of a sudden, I'm feeling good. One week, yes, I've conquered this. Here we go. I'm ready. Got my stuff again. And all of a sudden, I go through some other phase of stuff. And basically, I, had, I just had no energy. If you know me, I, I, I like energy. Okay, I mean, energy is something, you know, it, I thrive on it, okay? But I had no energy. I was exhausted, and I was going through nausea. And, and so I just, I would come over, and I'd go, all right, hey, I'm feeling pretty good today. And I'd get about 10 minutes into it, and I'm just, <laughs> I can't, you know. And that just went on and on and on. Past my, past my quarantine day, and it's just like trying to get energy back. Well, something else started happening of a spiritual nature during all of this. I couldn't have the kind of time I like to have with God. So I, I wasn't praying like I want to pray. I wasn't reading God's word. I just didn't have the energy. I didn't. I just didn't have it in me. Uh, and trying to watch what was going on in our nation during this time it just was sickening. You know, and so I just. I, I got to the place where I felt like a darkness came over my soul. You ever had that? You know, a darkness can come in the form of a heaviness, and sometimes it can come in the form of an emptiness. And that's the way it felt for me. Very, very empty. 
I couldn't sleep at night and I'd lay there in bed and I, I felt like I'm so far from God. I felt like, I don't know. Uh, it, was, it was a horrible feeling. I lost motivation. I just, I didn't care. It's like, do I even care about being a pastor? Do I even care about your kingdom, God, right now? It's just like, look, look how messed up everything else is. When are we getting out of this stuff? You know, and I just, I, I, I came to the place where it was just a darkness over me. And um, um, I just, I, I didn't care. I, I was rethinking, maybe, maybe this is it. I don't care if it is or not. I was losing heart. I felt the power of giving up. I felt disconnected. I'm telling you what, it's so good to be in here to worship this morning. I needed that because I couldn't, I couldn't get what I needed in my personal private times with God because they just weren't happening. To be able to come in here today and just pour out my heart before God and it was just allowing to fill me up was, was so what I needed. Um, I don't want to see God's people lose heart. It is a miserable place. The way I felt on some of the nights and some of the days, I felt so empty, it felt like one of my concepts of hell, which is total separation from God and total separation from God's people. C.S. Lewis envisions hell in that way, that eternity, eternity without Jesus, and eternity without your loved ones, and you just feel so distant, and you, you, you hunger for relationship, whether it's with God, or with your family or your friends, you hunger for that, but you feel so far removed from it. Have you ever had that experience? You can't make them happen. They come unannounced. The darkness just comes over your soul, just pervades. And it's just like, what do I do? And, you know, and anyhow, I felt like losing heart. I watched last week's service, watched the whole thing, just sat there with it and everything, and I could tell good things are happening, but I couldn't experience it. Not because I wasn't in the right frame of mind, but I wasn't here. Now again, remember my qualification, you can't be here at any particular time. We understand that. But my concern is the length of time of disconnectedness and disengagement and what that does to us. I got to the point where I didn't really care if I came to church. In a short period of time, in two weeks, what? You don't want to come, past, you're the pastor, you don't want to come to church? No, for a while, I was just like, I don't care. Y'all didn't hear anything from me, did you? <laughs> I didn't say a word. I had, I had stuff on mentoring. I've been working on this mentoring track with certain people that was supposed to start. I, I, I just I couldn't do nothing. 
And I got to the place where I didn't care. I know that we're moving towards doing this stuff out in our community with Jesus Burger and with, uh, with Fresh Start. And, and we had meetings that were going on before. All this stuff, it just didn't matter. Been there? What do you do? Well, Luke 18, Jesus tells this parable so that his people would know and understand that at all times, don't lose heart, don't give up, and prayer is the key. It's part of the key. So in this parable, let me tell you really quick, so I'm gonna try to race through this because I spent a lot of time just telling you all of this. In this parable, Jesus says, I wanna tell you about an unjust judge and about a widow woman. And that widow woman represent, you can say it might represent your own personal life, okay? Is it all right if I come down here with y'all? Okay. So, so here's, here's the story. That widow woman may represent you personally, but it may also represent some of the social ills that we've seen in our nation of late, right? And you've got a judge who in the parable, Jesus says he's an unrighteous judge. And the, what, what makes him an unjust or an unrighteous judge is two qualities that he does not possess or bad qualities that he does possess. One is it says that he does not fear God nor respect man. That's the character, the character of this judge. I do not fear God and I do not respect man. I don't care about your concern. I don't care what God's law would, would want from have you ever Have you ever stood before a judge you wondered if he feared God or she feared God or, or respected man? We've got a lot of judges like that. But in this parable, Jesus says, this widow woman has a need, a desperate need, and she's coming to this judge again and again and again and requesting, I, bring me justice. I have nothing else and, and my adversary will not do his part. Will you defend me? And the judge is like, woman, <laughs> I, don't, I don't fear God and I don't care about you. But she'd come back again and again and again. And finally, this is what the, the guy, he, he's exasperated. He says, again, this is a story Jesus is telling. But he's, this judge is exasperated. Even though I don't fear God and I don't respect man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend you lest you weary me by your incessant coming, requesting help. I'm going to do it for you. For your persistence, I'm going to do it. And at that moment, Jesus says this. Jesus says to his listeners, he says, did you hear what the unjust judge said? Did you hear? He said he'll do it. The unjust judge is going to answer the request of this widow woman. That might be you. That might be the thing that you're struggling with. It might be the thing that you are personally ready to give up on. It might be the thing that you're feeling like I'm losing heart over. But here's the thing. 
Jesus is, says, did you hear what the unjust judge said? I'm gonna give you what you need. You've been persistent, here it comes. And he says, now, now, will not God, now there's a shift. The, the parable's over. We're in real time now, real life. Will not God, who is a just judge, by the way, right? He's a just judge. Will he not give you what you ask for those of you who cry out to him day and night. The point is the persistence that we don't lose heart, we come back to him again and again. Not because he's like the unjust judge that says, you can wear me out, woman. Here, I'll give it to you. No, it's like, this is the heart of our God. Guys, we struggle to believe this at times. I struggled to believe it in the last couple of weeks. It took me the latter part of this week to start refining my voice with God. I had enough energy and, and strength. Now, I believe that we're, you were praying for me and because of that, I didn't sink into something deeper or worse, okay? Uh, but coming out of that, guys, is recognizing how much we need one another. So, so this, this uh, verse, this verse says, Shall not God bring about justice for his elect? Some of your versions say his chosen ones, his chosen people. Guys, that's, that's us, that's the believers. Will God not bring about justice for his elect? Are you one of the elect? Are you one of his chosen? Are you a part of his people? Let me, let me tell you, notice he doesn't, he doesn't just individualize this. He makes this about all of us. Worship team can come on back up. Guys, thank you. So, we're not going to be long because we got a week, okay? We have a week. We, ha we have a year, a decade, Maybe we have more, I don't know. <laughs> if I had more time to give you the larger context, which I was planning to, uh, you, you would see that there's a whole lot that, that's setting the stage for, for what, what's happening in these latter days. But I'm not gonna go there right now. Um, Verse seven, I'll read this again. Now shall not God, I, I want, when you hear this, I want you to don't go, God, the stern being up there in heaven. When you, when you hear God, think, that's, that's your personal God. How do you treat your God? This is your heavenly father. This is your creator. This is the one who, who loves you, loves your soul in ways that you and I can't fathom how he could possibly love us, right? He cares enough about you and you're being one of his chosen. Meaning, guys, I don't even go there. To those who cry out to him day and night, how many are day criers? How many are night criers? <laughs> How many are day and night criers? <laughs> okay. 
the, the, the point is just simply that God's listening at all times. And that person who wants God, that person who wants him to deliver, that person who, who wants him to, to do whatever, the, the, I need justice in this situation. Our nation needs justice. We're the most divided I've ever seen us be in my lifetime. I don't, I don't know how God's going to deal with it, but I know that he will use the church in some ways. And, but then there's personal things in our lives, aren't there? Yeah, that, that we just, I need justice, God. Hey, he's ready to deliver. The, but the thing is, he says this, verse eight, I tell you that he will bring about justice for them speedily. Speedily, not the unjust judge, there was no speed in him, okay? But with your God, with your God, he's in a hurry for you. But then he leaves us, Jesus leaves us with this very challenging question. However, Jesus says, when the Son of Man comes, and the Son of Man was a, a title that Jesus used of himself, the Son of Man, the Son of God. He said, when the Son of Man returns, when he comes back for his elect, that's you and me, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're one of the elect, when he comes back for you, it says, will he find faith on the earth? I like the New Living Translation says, how many will he find faithful when he returns? What does faithfulness look like there? It clings to God in prayer. It, it finds from him strength so that one does not lose heart and give up. There is so much that would make us want to give up in this day and time. I kept thinking we were going to somehow get the world better and better and better. And all of our efforts always seem to me, it just gets, kind of gets a little worse, a little worse, and a little worse. So you just want to lose heart and give up. We can't, we can't improve on this, God. We know that you can if you bring a reformation or a revival or an awakening or something like that or just end it all and come back and, and we'll, we'll go to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for that. <laughs> um, but it's not over yet. If you read chapter 17 it'll put that in context for you what that looks like until that time i don't want to be a person that loses heart i'm i'm, I'm gonna take this a little further guys these are the times that you start questioning a lot of things in your faith these are the times you start going, the way I felt last week and when I was going through it, I felt empty. I felt alone. Yeah, I've got a family around me that loves me, but I couldn't feel their love, not because they weren't loving. I just, something in my soul was, was empty. And it's kind, it feels awful. What are the things in such a quick period of time, I just started disconnecting from and disengaging. And I think, I fought all last year to not disengage. Man, it, there was every reason to just like, well, the heck with it. I'm out. This is hard. Let another generation rise up and do something. I, aren't I old enough yet that I can just kind of get ready for my departure? <laughs> You know, all those sorts of weird things go through your mind. Guys, 
I'm just saying, what are the things that you've disengaged from maybe over the course of this past year? You didn't intend to disengage from that. Yeah, maybe, maybe I, I, can't, I can't come to church right now because I have a loved one that's, that I can't get them exposed to. I understand that. But I'm saying, did you along the way disengage from other things that maybe you shouldn't have? Maybe, maybe, maybe you're disengaged from just seeking God like you used to. Maybe you're disengaged from finding ways to reconnect. It, we're trying to find ways to connect in this strange, peculiar environment, aren't we? And we'll do it, man. If you can tell me, if you're not able to be here, but you can tell us a way that we can help you stay connected, please let us know, because we want to. I needed to be here today. It was not enough for me to be out for two weeks and have no fellowship of the, of the body, and I can just go it on my own. I, could, I couldn't do it. I, I just was, I was empty. That darkness wouldn't lift. But man, it was, <laughs> it was parting the last couple of days and this morning I had to come in here and worship. So as we move into this year, I don't know how much longer this pandemic lasts and all the other social ills and stuff like they're gonna probably, I don't know. But I can tell you this, the church of Jesus Christ, his elect cannot lose heart. We cannot stop praying. We cannot stop seeking him. We cannot disconnect. We cannot disengage. We have to find ways to be. This is a great crowd here today. But we have to, we have to pursue him. And so, so guys, here's the thing. I'm gonna just tell you three things that I'm gonna ask you to engage in, but I know there are other things that the Spirit of God will show you if you're open to Him. That's like, maybe I, maybe I checked out on this and checked out on that. Maybe I lost heart in this. Maybe I've disengaged here. And if that's it, then just deal with that before the Lord. But here's the first one. Re-engage your heart in believing and trusting in your God to care for the justice of the thing that you're crying out for in prayer. Okay? Believe in him for that. And if you need something just to help you get started, check in tomorrow at 7 a.m. with us. Or if you miss that, check in a little bit later, but just find time. I don't, I don't care. Go spend 10 minutes or an hour or two hours, whatever you have, whatever's right, but, but get yourself back to where you're reconnected. You're engaged in what God's wanting to do. What, whatever else this pandemic is, it is not about shutting down the church of Jesus Christ. It, it's just not. So, so, so let's engage. We'll be in here Wednesday night, by the way, praying over families and marriages and young people and, and this generation of, of, of uh, young single men and women who God's going to raise up to do awesome, glorious things and our children and, and, and all of us, okay? We're going to be praying over those things Wednesday night. Here's the three things that I'm asking you to engage in. Re-engage your God in prayer. Re-engage the community that you're a part of. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to come here. I just mean find ways that we're communicating and connecting and us reach out. Us reach out to those who can't be here right now, okay? And vice versa. But let's reconnect the elect, okay? Let's reconnect with one another. And then third, and this is to men, to husbands, I'm just gonna ask you if you would, if you would lead 
in your marriage this week, daily, you find a time that you go find your wife, say, let's go for a walk, let's go over here and take time and let's pray together. You go, I don't do that, I don't do that well. So, <laughs> get good at it by practice. Okay, what I'm gonna do is if you're willing to engage in something that God's stirring in your heart today, would you come and just spread out among here? We can social distance, just spread out for a moment and we're gonna, they're gonna lead us in a, in a song and let this be the time that we say, we need to visibly, physically sometimes just move ourselves to say, that's what I'm gonna do, okay? And it's just a time just to, just to pray together and say, God, this week I'm re-engaging. This might not be anything I said, but we're gonna re-engage.